Welcome back to A Guide to Seasons, part two with me, Mr. Sealy P. First up on A Guide to Seasons Part 2 is going to be Skipping the Night. This is going to come in very, very handy, jumping ahead, especially when the Seasons mod is running full tilt. On the PlayStation controller, if you press L1, R1 and Triangle, you should get this screen come up. You have the option to go to the morning or dawn. That will change depending on what season you're on. Those times will be slightly different. Click on that and it will say resting for another day at the farm and then the next day will begin okay so I apologize for my voice I have a stinking cold <laughs> and it's getting worse by the day but if you can stick with it <laughs> great um, the next thing we are going to look at is the Wobster. The Wobster, you ask, what is such a crazy thing? This is a tool of magic and wizardry. If we go into the store and we go to Miscellaneous, we scroll across and to get to the M420 Wobster. This is a measuring tool and it will give you information about all sorts of stuff that will help you around the farm. So once you've bought it for 3,000, what did you say it was? 3,500, wasn't it? 3,500. To use it, you just operate your hand tool, chainsaw, then again, and you get your Wopster, your little handheld piece of equipment. And this will measure all sorts of things. This will measure um, trees, soil, crops, bales, and pallets. So we're gonna have a look at the different things it can do. First off, now because this is kind of an ongoing um, let's play, I've only got seasons enabled on here so I can do the video. But what you do, walk up to whatever it is in particular, um, and you press on the PlayStation controller, circle, keep your finger down on it, and you'll get a measurement. It will tell you what's in the, the bale. Um, it says 4,000 litres. Now I'm assuming because these were pre existing because what it's supposed to do also is give you a reading of um, how fermented they are how far along the fermenting process and how many hours are left until they're fully fermented these just say silage 4000 litres so I'm assuming from that they're fully fermented now if you go onto Realismus Modding's uh, webpage and go into the manual and I really really urge you to do that I said that in the first video there's a lot to read but it's very comprehensive, there's a lot of great information on there, it makes life a lot easier and, and better to understand really what's actually happening. Um, I've been in contact with um, Joss from Realismus Modding who messaged me um, and mm. thanked me for the, the first part of the video, but um, also left some comments on the video as well. Very, very helpful um, and I will be honest with you if I don't know something I'll tell you I don't know something but I will do my best to find out and answer any questions so that's why this is part two because there's more information that needs to be shared now so that's bales um, while we're on the subject of bales we'll just do it this one as well circle and that just tells me it's straw now the thing about it is with the new mod installed um, we talked about maps that were enabled, I was using the wrong word, optimised is the best word. The Seasons mod will work on all maps, however, if the map's not fully optimised there are a couple of things that won't work. There's what's being referred to as the snow mask, 
and the snow mask is where sheds, buildings, those kind of things, if it's optimised, the snow will not fall inside a shed or a building. That includes placeables. If it isn't optimised, the snow will fall through the buildings and doesn't protect anything. So the maps that are optimised, I believe all black sheet modding maps are, the giant's maps are, and there are various different maps that are on in the process of being optimised. Um, and this is why this is important, because your bales now, your grass, your straw, your hay, um, need to be kept inside as much as possible because they will start to rot, the weather will have an effect on them, they need to be put indoors. So that's an interesting change. If you cut grass, um, the grass will rot. I think overnight you'll lose 50%. If you leave it in a trailer, you'll lose 50%. I don't know how that works for the bunker silos though. I would assume, and I could be completely wrong on this again, you get one of the new bunkers the way you can store your grass, your straw, your hay and that kind of stuff loose whether that gets affected in storage I don't know for definite I would hope not but if you're going to lose 50% every 24 hour period wow that's a lot that means you're you're literally going to have to use it You know, anyway use it or lose it I think is going to be the phrase um, what else yeah, anyway, carrying on with the Wopstat, things are going to come back to me. I've got a whole list of things I want to try and get through that people have commented and said, can you talk about this, what about this, what about that? So we're going to get onto that. Um, I've got a list of people I want to thank at the end of the video as well, and there are plenty of others. So if I forget your name or I haven't said your name, there were loads of people that commented. So if I just jump over here and go into the field and use my Wopster and do it again. Okay, so what it's given me at the top is the location that's where we are the kind of grid reference if you want to call it that the next one down the second one that's how many meters above sea level I think roughly the water plane anyway how high you are above the water plane at the moment there's no in-game effect but I think they're working on things that are going to adjust that I'm not too sure but that they're working on the next one down says what crop it is what type whatever it is so it's grass it then tells you the next one down is the height, the growth. It's 67% uh, grown. When it's fully grown, it will say 100%. That's as tall as it's going to get, as, as how much it's going to grow. The next one down then is the crop moisture. That makes a huge difference. For harvesting, it will only allow you, I think, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm getting this right, it will only allow you to harvest when the moisture's below a certain amount. I think it's 25%, I think. Um, again, uh, don't hold me to that, but that's what the crop moisture is for. Now, the crop moisture can be turned off, like I showed you um, yesterday and I'll sh on, in the last video. I'll show you again in a minute. The next one down is the fertilization state, how fertilized the ground is. In this case, zero. There is no fertilization on this field whatsoever. And then the last one is the ground wetness. Again, that doesn't have any effect at the moment, but I believe they're working on adjusting the mod. So if the ground wetness is very, very high, it will slow down vehicles, kind of bog them down, that kind of thing. Um, um, compaction will change, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what you, your measurement will do. You can do that on any field, any crop. Now it does also say in the instructions for this that if you don't get a reading straight away, move and try it again because it may well be um, that sometimes it's just a bit finicky. It's a temperamental piece of equipment. It's finely tuned and finely balanced. Knocking it, dropping it is not going to help but you sometimes just need to move to make sure it works properly. The other thing it will do, and this works more on trees you've planted which are growing, but what it will do, if you go up to a tree and do it on a tree, it will tell you what the tree is. It will tell you the height of the tree, the maturity of it. This one says 100%, that's as tall as that tree is going to get. But obviously if you've planted trees and you're growing them, it will tell you whether what stage they're at, whether they're fully grown or whether they're not fully grown or not. And where you've got them planted, if you're planting them yourself, it will give you tree distances, how far the next tree is away from it. Because if you plant them too closely, it can affect how they grow. Um, so it will tell you whether or not, if it's only got to 50% growth and it's not going up anymore, it might be your trees are too close together and it's preventing them from growing. So yeah, a whole host of uses for this thing. Um, the last thing I want to show you is pallets, which we'll get onto in just a second. Hang on.
So here we are. At the store, a couple of pallets I purchased earlier. So if I do this, and we'll try it again, circle. Poplars, 2,000 litres or 2,000 whatever. It will tell you what the, what's in it and how much is left. So that's quite handy. I know often, there you go, fertiliser, 1,000 litres. Um, if you've used some and you've got fertiliser pallets on a shelf or you've, you know, and you've backed in with a trailer and you've used some and it's filled up your cedar, your fertiliser, whatever it might be, you're never quite sure what's in each pallet. Um, and often you have to pick them up with forks. As soon as you put them on forks, it will tell you what's there. But that can be quite a lengthy process. With this thing, you can go along your shelves or on the floor or wherever they all are, check each pallet, and it will tell you what you've got in it, how much is left, and what they are. Because I'm terrible for remembering what these all are. The different colours, and they're all lined up, and that tells me straight away it's fertiliser. Awesome. So for those uh, absent-minded fellows like myself, it's jolly jolly handy. Um, that's pretty much it for the Wopster. It's quite a handy tool. Um, there is, <laughs> I'll say this again, there is so much going on with this mod. It's incredible what this mod is doing to the game. Um, truly, truly phenomenal. And I'm just scratching the, the top at the moment, literally. Um, as things are being said, I'm going, I'm looking, I'm checking them out, I'm finding out. This is a handy tool. Very, very nice indeed very very useful um, so what was next on my list I'm trying to think um, grass rotting we said about that the grass will rot hay and stuff they need to be stored away um, they will only last so many cycles as well though I think it's only two two days or two season chunks I'm trying to remember what it was now um, so it's a good idea whereas before I think a lot of people are going for loose stuff and putting into barns and things you're better off bailing it the bales will will gradually rot they will start to go um, so it means you've got to keep going you can't just do an absolute ton stick them in a barn leave them there indefinitely you've got to keep going through that cycle like it would be on a real farm it, it's, it's absolutely brilliant um, oh yes that was the other thing right hang on one second let's put that away so I know this is infuriating some people um, let's jump in now I have mine set off anyway, but auto engine start is now disabled. If I go in here and scroll across, um, automatic engine start is off all the time. You cannot adjust it. So if you're running the seasons mod, it's off. You have to automatically, you have to manually start your engine. It doesn't automatically start anymore. There is no option for that. I know some people don't like to turn it off I always have done I just find it a little bit more realistic um, but that's off all the time you can't do anything about that that's off you just have to get used to it and that is to do with the maintenance of the vehicles etc um, when you start them up the higher the longer you've been using them the more maintenance required will mean they will either start they'll misfire they won't start straight away they can actually if you haven't been maintaining your vehicles while you're using them they can stop working and I believe looking at the look at the website you can have a catastrophic failure that doesn't sound like something you want to have in the middle of a field while you're doing work um, right next thing oh yes um, talking about the hay bales and the grass and that kind of thing when you're making hay oh yes what I was going to show you uh, if I do L1 and options and I come into my settings for the mod if I go down to crop moisture I can turn crop moisture on and off uh, so I can go all the way down I can turn that on and off because that can have a huge effect on how you harvest when you can harvest one of the big effects this does have is when you're making hay if it rains and you cut grass or you've cut grass and it rains it won't allow you to ted that grass and turn it into hay if it's too wet so <laughs> this is yeah I mean it was how it would be in real life tedding it will turn it over allow it to dry but it needs to dry a bit first before you can turn it before it will dry again before it turns into hay uh, the wopster will come in very handy for pointing at it and telling you how much moisture is in it um, some people may find that intensely irritating and may decide no I'm turning crop moisture off um, I will do seasons to a certain point but that's going a step too far <laughs> it, it may well do you know I can totally totally understand that um, 
I'm going down my list. Auto engine start, done that. Handheld device, done that. Uh, grass rotting, the night skip we've already done. Oh yeah, pedestrians. <laughs> this is another cool one. Pedestrians. When you get to the winter months, if it's cold out, the pedestrians don't appear. They don't come out because it's too cold to come out. It's those little things. It's a little detail, but wow. Um, that's, that's just incredible. Um, I was asked actually the other day, if you go onto Realismus Modding's website and have a look through the manual, um, is there a difference between PC and console? Are there more features available on one than the other? Obviously, PC over console, not the other way around. Um, and Joss told me um, they're the same. Absolutely. Um, what's in that manual is what you can do, what's on there. There are a few things that like I say they're adjusting, they're tweaking to try and make it even more immersive, which if you think, how, you know, how are you going to make this more immersive than it already is? But it is incredible. Um, I, I really do need to start thinking what I need to do next. Okay, bear with me. And we'll look at the next thing. I remembered what it was. It came to me um, in a flash. Contracting. This is different. I kind of mentioned it briefly, I think, in the first episode. So, obviously, on um, the West Coast, not yeah, the West Coast. What am I talking about? The missions available sticker on the field. Uh, if I click on that, it tells me what I'm going to be paid. And it says fertilizing nine hundred and twenty two pounds. Ring uh hang on a minute. Contracting jobs used to be in the thousands. What's going on? For me, this is probably gonna affect me more I mean it's all gonna affect everything you do and make you really think about it, but I make my money made my money from contracting. Off screen, ton of contracts, make a load of money, move on with the map. Um they've made this all far more realistic all of this all of this mod is all done based upon real life data 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 however you would say it um, real life data from around the world from farms um, weather patterns soil temperatures um, payments even selling your vehicles will fluctuate over the course of a year it is huge what this does um, and here's the other thing, as well as very, very low payments for jobs, there's no bonuses anymore for time. So if you do it quickly, you don't get a time bonus. Makes no difference whatsoever. Um, their argument being that it's more like real life because you wouldn't. I don't know whether I would argue that or not. Um, but anyway, yeah, so contracting, big changes.
So, as you've just seen, zero bonus. That's going to be a difficult one to work through. Anyway, that's about it for this part two of the Seasons Mod Guide 2. Uh, I'm sure there'll probably be a part three as new things come to light, as new things get found out, as people ask me more questions about things I don't know yet but can find out or try to find out. Um, but like I said at the start, I urge you, go onto Realismus Modding's uh, website, have a look, read through, there's loads of information on there. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of people putting out content as well that will help you. Before I finish off then, just a few shout outs, a few thank yous to various different people. Loads of people commented, if I don't say your name, thank you, thank you for everybody who has commented. Honestly, loads and loads of people. Lots of you said the same thing. Uh, so this is it. I can't obviously. I'll be here for hours otherwise. Um, so SS Lane Victory, Elder Eleven, Jim, Paul, Patrick. I think it's Caden, or it could be Kden. Depends. Uh, golf cart jockey, uh, Dala, Andrew, David. To name but a few. Uh, Cameron, as always. Frag Dad. Thank you very much. Um, and. Finally, uh, Joss, 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 I think it might be Joss, uh, from Realismus Modding. Thank you for getting in touch. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for all you do. Phenomenal mod. Uh, enjoying it immensely, getting to grips with it. And um, I'm, I'm mildly terrified about actually playing through a Let's Play with it on. But I'm sure it's going to be great fun. And that's it from me on this episode. If you've liked it found it useful informative give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching <laughs>